somewhere in the earlier Cambrian period of geological time scale, a unique plesiomorphic character started appearing in some marine filter feeding organism. They formed a separate lineage then, including three minor phyla. Phyla Bryozoa, Phylum Brachiopoda, and Phylum Foronida. So the Phylum Bryozoa is the organism which resembles Nidarian polyp, and Phylum Brachiopoda is organism which resembles a bivalvine mollusk, and Phylum Foronida resembles an annelid worm. See, so uh, morphologically they are distinct, but they possess a unique character which are very helpful for their feeding that character is known as lophophore so the organisms or the groups which possess lophophore are termed to be as lophophorites the clad lophophorata includes I mean that clad has been delimited based on the presence of a specialized feeding organ that we have discussed that is lophophore and etymologically uh, looking into the lophophore it is uh, derived from two greek words which means crest bearing that means lophos means the crest of a helmet See, it looks like a crown or a helmet and lophos mean crest of the helmet and phoros means bearing. So that means crest bearing. So what is a lophophore? It's a very common question. You can see in your question papers and this is the answer. Lophophore is a horse shoe shaped ring or crown of hollow ciliated tentacles you can see the hollow ciliated tentacles here hollow here means it contains a coelom inside so it is a horse shoe shaped ring or crown of hollow ciliated tentacles which are encircling the mouth and are used for filter feeding so in the center there will be a mouth and which will be encircled by the crown of ciliated hollow tentacles and that organ is known as lophophore so this is the unique plesiomorphic character i was discussing about which is commonly seen in these three minor phyla minor phyla, phyla bryozoa phyla foronida and phyla Brachiopoda. So today we are going to discuss about two of the minor phyla, the phylum Bryozoa and phylum Foronida. First, we will look at the phylum Foronida. Look at this. These are marine bottom dwelling organisms which are tubiculars. You see the tube-like structure which is extending towards the bottom of the C. Let us see. And the lophophore, you can see very clearly it is house shoe shaped spirally arranged one. So it is very good looking and it is unitary too. Unitary means it is living singularly, but sometimes it can be seen in groups but as a separate unit which is embedding into the soil. Let us uh, deep, uh, deeply explore the saline features of the phylum foronids. So the phylum foronids is commonly known as horse shoe worms because the uh, lophophore here you can see it looks like a horse shoe. So it is commonly known, known as horse shoe worms. So they are marine worm like see it is worm like and tube dwelling or tubiculus Sessile. Sessile means which is not movable. Sessile, benthic silomates. Benthic means bottom dwelling silomates. See, uh, the term silomate is very significant here. Uh, not even in phylum Foronida, but also in phylum uh, Bryozoa also. Because uh, the adult individual possess distinct silom. So, uh, the Bryozoans and Foronida share and a second character other than that of lofofo that is they both are silomates so individuals secrete a chitinous tube which is buried in sand 
look at here this this is an individual it secrete a chitinous tube which is buried in sand in which the individual organism lives so this is tubicular nature of this uh, organism and uh, if you are looking closer the adult body is divided into three major parts the first part is epistome epistome is a projection which is extending over the mouth and second portion is the mesosome mesosome includes the entire lophophoral area it includes lophophore mouth anus and nephridium see nephridiopore to be very specific nephridiopore so the first portion is the epistome which is the overhanging portion from the mouth and second portion is the mesosome which includes the entire lophophoral region and the third portion of the body is the longest portion which is known as metasome metasome includes the trunk of the body look at this image you can see the trunk of the organism here and uh, the trunk of the organism is also termed to be as metasome and each of these body parts contain its own coelom for example in the epistome you can see a coelom which is known as protocoel and in mesosome you can see a coelom which is known as mesocoel and in metasome the coelom is known as metacoel so for epist epistome the coelom is protocoel for mesosome the coelom is mesocoel and for metasome the coelom is metacoel so that is a very special character so they are coelomate they are tubiculous they are worm like they are marine benthic organisms so uh, moving further to another character see the uh, elementary canal it is u shaped so u shaped gut is another feature for the lophophorates uh, because it is also shared by phylum Brayozoa, U shaped gut is also seen there. Mouth and anus are closer to each other. Look at this image. You can see the mouth opening and anus opening is very closer. But uh, there is a slight difference. Mouth is encircled by ciliated lophophore, but anus is a little far away from mouth and it is not enclosed within lophophore it is outside the lophophore and while talking about the circulatory system it is a closed circulatory system you can see the circulatory system here i mean uh, blood capillary is here it is closed through which the blood will pass and only one pair of nephridium is seen see here you can see nephridium and that is metanephridia the uh, very same excretory organ which is seen in phylum annelida and uh, the nervous system is very primitive and sub, uh, sub epidermal nervous system so it is sub epidermal nervous system it is very primitive one and uh, if you are talking about the reproduction it is most often sexual uh, and sexual forms are hermaphrodites it is evident from this image that testes and ovaries both are seen in same organism and that kind of organism we can call it by a name which is known as hermaphrodites so sexual forms are hermaphrodites and development is uh, indirect that means it possesses a larva so here we have a larva uh, that is unique free swimming and it is known as actinotroch Actinotroch larva is a special larva, unique larva, which is seen in phylum Foronida. And moving to the example of uh, phylum Foronida, uh, Foronis is the example of phylum Foronida. Actually, uh, in the entire world, we can uh, see only 14 species of Foronids, which was distributed in two separate genera. Foronis and Foronaspis. Uh, so here, uh, as your example, it was given as Foronis. So it is a marine tubicular animal. The basic feature of the same uh, lophophores, 
uh, inhabiting in the bottom sediments of the sea, living in uh, self-secreted chitinous tube, which remain buried in sand. We have already discussed that feature and it is clear here in this image also. You can see a chitinous uh, tube which, is, uh, which get extended into the sand in which the organism lives. Phoronis is a suspension feeder. It is also known as filter feeder. Um, so the heart, there is no specialized heart. But as we discussed in the salient feature of Phoronida, the circulatory system is closed in nature. So uh, uh, the, that particular blood vessels may be contractile in nature so that the blood will be pumped into different areas of the body. So the circulatory system uh, lacks a distinct heart, but the contractile blood vessels are very much evident in this group. And uh, there are two particular kinds of blood cells. One is the leukocytes and other is hemocytes. And that hemocytes possess hemoglobin. So that is all about the example Foronis. All other characters are uh, there in phylum Foronida. You can write that characters too in the Foronis too. And you can very clearly see the uh, house shoe shaped arrangement, spiral arrangement here. And the long trunk you can see and the end of the trunk it is somewhat dilated and that part here it is written as end bulb but usually it was termed to be as ampulla. And in this image you can see the mouth which is encircled by two rows of ciliated tentacles and that is very special to Foronis. Two rows of tentacles are there. See, two rows of tentacles are there. And the anus which lies closer to the mouth but anus is outside the ring of the tentacle. See, ring of the tentacle is here but anus is outside. And you can see a very distinct U-shaped gut. And the outer covering will be chitinous too and this dilated portion uh, is known as ampulla. So moving further to phylum bryozoa it is also known as ectoprocta. Uh, look at this image it looks more than uh, an animal like uh, it doesn't look like an animal but seems to be a plant or mouse which can be seen distributed in the ocean floor. So, the phylum Bryozoans is commonly known by the name moss animals. It looks like a mat of moss which is distributed evenly in the ocean floor. So, they are marine and in the same time, there are certain species which are seen in freshwater too. That means they are marine and freshwater benthic organisms. But in case of phylum Foronida, uh, there is no freshwater form. So, in case of Bryozoa, freshwater forms are same. So that is a difference between similar looking organisms. And other very distinct feature of phylum Bryozoa are they are not a unitary organism. They cannot live solely. They cannot live individually. But they live in colonies. You can see they are living colonies on a stalk which is known as stolen. And that peculiar nature uh, provides the appearance of a plant-like material. Like, uh, let us see deeper. So, what is happening there? So, they are individual microscopic zooids. So, say for example, this is an individual organism and we can call this individual organism as zooid. This is another zooid, this is another zooid. So, individual microscopic zooids are living in a colony by secreting their own chitinous or calcareous chambers. So that individual zooids are secreting outside them a protective case or chamber which is known as suasium. So this is the suasium, this is the suasium and this is the suasium. So here also we can see clearly this yellow color portion is the suasium which was secreted by this particular Zooids. So each zooids of the colony was in turn protected by a chitinous or calcareous. Calcareous means it may be some bit 
more rigid by adding calcium crystals to that. So chitinous and calcareous chambers are the protective chambers which was secreted by individual zooids. So inside uh, zooasium, uh, the individual zooids are living. And this zooasium is interconnected through a network which is known as stolen. See, in the stolen you can see zooasium and inside zooasium you can see zooids. So that is the arrangement, peculiar arrangement. So they are, the, uh, the individuals coming under or the species coming under phylum bryozoa are colonial in nature. So individual organism can be called as zooids and that individual organism in turn is protected by a protective chitinous or calcareous chamber which is known as zooasium. So uh, what is the use of this colony mode of existence. So there may be something special adaptation like uh, there is a kind of polymorphism. Polymorphism means uh, it is having different morphology. The different kind of zoids is having different morphology. But about 80 percentage of the phylum bryozoan zoids all are autozoids. Autozoids means autozoids are organism those are capable for feeding by themselves. So 80% of the zooids are autozoids or they are capable of feeding by themselves and remaining 20% uh, are different kind of heterozoids. Heterozoids means sometimes the zooids which, which will be uh, assigned with the duty of reproduction or zooids which will be assigned with the uh, duty of protection of the colony like that. We will see a little more detail in coming slides and uh, uh, as it is having the polymorphism property it also possesses the division of labor. So every kind of zoids is performing their own separate duties. Say for example this zoid is performing the feeding duty and maybe the protective zoids like avicularium will doing the protective activity of the colony. So each are doing their own duties. So polymorphism is there and division of labor is there. And if we are seeing uh, the individual zooids uh, very closely, you can see a U-shaped gut is there, of course, the green color one. And uh, the anterior part of the body is a retractile introvert. That means this introvert can be extended outside for feeding and after feeding this extended retrovert can be retracted back into the suvasium by a special type of muscle which is known as retractor muscle. So in this, this part of the image shows the extended introvert including the law for four. See, this is the law of four, and the law of four containing area, including mouth, is known by the name introvert or proboscis here, which can be extended outside for feeding. And after feeding, the entire introvert will go back into the zooasium by the help of the same retractor muscle. See, and after that, the entire zooid will go inside. So if there is no feeding, we cannot see individual um, zooids outside. So it looks like a plain plant or moss. That's why it is known as moss animals. And uh, if you are talking about the reproduction, it is very special because it was alternated by asexual and sexual reproduction. Sexual uh, reproduction includes hermaphrodites. Hermaphrodites that we have already uh, stated that it possesses both male and female reproductive organs. And after sexual reproduction, an individual uh, gradually settles in the bottom of the sea and from there, it divides asexually by budding and that particular individual zooid from which an entire colony will form is known as ancestrula. So that is the initial parent of the colony. So from a single zooasium which was reproduced earlier by sexual means 
gradually reproduces through asexual means of budding, so thereby increasing the colony numbers, incre increasing the individual numbers of the colony, uh, like uh, it will be like clones of that uh, in initial parent. And that initial parent is known as ancestrula. So it is very easy to remember ancestor. Uh, remember the term ancestor and that particular soil from which an entire colony develops is known as ancestrula and that particular parent is employing a sexual mode of reproduction. Example of the phylum Bryozoa is Bigula or it is literally uh, termed to be as bunch of flowers. It looks like a bunch of flowers. It is also a typical marine colonial bryozoan. It's plant-like polymorphic colony. You can see the plant-like polymorphic colony. You can see the uh, filter feeding zoids here and also the protective zoids here. That spherical ones. And that spherical protective zoid is very special. And there is a very special uh, zoid, defensive zoid, which is known as avicularium. Look at here. That is a heterozoid. Look at here. It looks like a head of a bird with the beaks open. And that particular defensive zoid is known as avicularium. And those species which possess this distinct avicularium is known as bigula avicularia or commonly it is known as bird's head coralline. So this is the scanning electron microscope pictures. You can see it very clearly, the beak-like structure. See, so this is a protective zoid. This is a protective heterozoid which is seen in bigula avicularia. So remember the name avicularia. Aves means birds. So remember that term avicularia is a special type of defensive heterozoid which is seen in bigula avicularia. And uh, other features we have already discussed. Anterior end forms a irreversible retractile introvert or proboscis which bears mouth, anus and lophophore. Here you have to remember one more thing like uh, here there is no metanephridia. In the phylum Foronida, in the anterior region, we have seen uh, lophophore, anus, mouth and nephridiopore. But here nephridiopore is absent. That means there is no distinct nephridiopore here in the case of phylum Bryozoa. Digestic analysis U-shape that we have already seen. Both of the phylum possess the same uh, character and there is no special organs for respiration and circulation. Uh, there in phylum Foronida, you have seen a circulatory system which is closed in nature, but here there is no separate circulatory system, there is no separate respiratory system, and of course there is no excretory system or excretory organ like nephridia. And they are monoecious and they contain a larva which is known as coronate larva. So coronate larva is the larva of bugula or phylum Bryozoa. So, that is the special saline features of the phylum Foronida and phylum Bryozoa. So, uh, both are coming under lophophorates. So, lophophorate is a clad which possess a specialized filter feeding organ which is the unique pseudomorphic character which I was mentioning originated in the early Cambrian period which distinguished these three minor phyla. Minor phyla Bryozoa, minor phyla Brachiopoda and minor phyla Foronida. Thank you.